Germain Vatimena trifft auf den Weltranglisten 14. Er ist hier in Mannheim an Position 11 gesetzt. Er stand schon in einem European Tour Finale. Er hat auf der European Tour schon einen neuen Data geworfen. Er hat sieben Pro Tour Turniere in seiner Karriere gewinnen können. Aus Stoke on Trent, Ian Diamond White. Best of 11 Legs heißt die Distanz auf der European Tour. Man braucht also sechs Legs, um in das Achtelfinale einzuziehen. Und auch herzlich begrüßen wollen wir den Caller dieser ersten Partie hier am Samstag. Es ist The Voice himself, Russ Bray. Day two here at the Happy Bet German Darts Grand Prix and therefore the last 32 compromising the 16 winners from Friday's action and 16 seeded players, the first of which we're going to see is that man Ian White still to come today Michael Van Gerwen the world number one looking to make it back to back European Tour victories also number two seed Peter Wright the likes of Daryl Gurney Michael Smith Simon Whitlock all in contention this evening Joe Cullen Benito van der Pass Dave Chisnell Rob Cross Mervyn King Gerwin Price and Yellow Class and the other seeded players joining the action this afternoon plenty of superb talent on that stage throughout today. Two sessions of darts to fill up your Saturday. And White is faced with a prospect of seeing off the machine gun, Jermaine Watamina, who defeated his fellow Dutchman, Michael Ploy. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. First leg, Jermaine, the throw first. Game on! That to get him through to the last 32. One on. Can he topple the seeded Ian White? Paul Nicholson. Joins our commentary team throughout the day. But for starters, it's myself, Chris Murphy, and Dan Dawson. Yeah, good afternoon and welcome back to Mannheim for the German oh, Darts man. Grand Prix. Three more of these Euro Tours before the European Championship in Hasselt in Belgium, but the Mine final weekend of qualifying for the Grand Prix and a number of players' qualification hopes hanging by a thread. The likes of Richard North will see an action today. He's in danger. Even more danger because he's taking on the world number one, Michael Van Gerwen. Jermaine Watamina is one of the guys, and there's a whole bunch of them, who could find their way to the Grand Prix, but they're going to have to go on and probably win the tournament. Now, don't rule that out, because even though this year has been dominated by Peter Wright and Michael Van Gerwen, winning eight of the Euro Tours between them, we have seen a third of this field nearly win a European Tour, and a whole bunch of others have made finals. You look this afternoon, Jelle Klaassen finalist, uh, Benito van der Pass finalist, Jamie Caven finalist, Ian White is a finalist himself when the Euro Tour was conceived in this sort of format back in 2012. So do not rule out a new winner. Although, of course, the bookies will tell you one of the winners is likely to be one of those 10 players who've won one of these already, and more specifically, probably Peter Wright or Michael Van Gerwen. But yeah. And you mentioned the fact that Richard North, who's hanging on to a, a spot in the World Grand Prix, the man that's just behind him is Ronnie Hybrecht, and he takes on Peter Wright. Yeah. So the players that are fighting it out with them will be quite happy to see them taking on the one and two seeds. Now, will Watamina be happy after this visit? Yes, he will. What a start for Watamina. 104 checkouts. The first blood to the Dutchman. Rat-a-tat-tat stuff from the Jermaine Watamina, the machine gun. Came through the European qualifiers. Saw off Michael Rastovitz wow. and Rick Hofstra for the loss of just four legs over two games before he overcame Michael Ploy, as you mentioned, Chris, in that first round game. 6-4 that finished. 87 average. It wasn't particularly impressive in the early stages but he got fired up towards the end of that game Jermaine Watamina and it actually seemed to produce a bit more out of him didn't it? Yeah very vocal on the stage and there wasn't as many people watching when he played yesterday so he was uh, heard loud and clear yeah, 3,500 capacity here. I think we're somewhere near that for today's action. 
Still a decent crowd last night. You can see the crowd stretching back to the back of the hall here in Mannheim. Brand new venue on the European Tour. Brand new event. Yeah, on the ever-growing European Tour, not just in terms of attendances, but also in terms of amount of tournaments. Up to 12 this year. We're going to add more to that in 2018. Yeah, 13 confirmed. You never know, they might squeeze another one in. I've not heard that they will, but they've done it before. And of course, the European Championship is effectively the European Tour Finals these days. Yeah. Uh, 104 from Watermana in leg one. White wants double top for 82. Game shot the center. Yeah, very White. solid Good stuff from Ian White. It's a 15 dart leg to hold his throw and level things up at one apiece. Well, the Diamond has made a couple of finals on the Pro Tour this year. He hasn't won anything, so even though he's been regularly challenging in the back end of tournaments, and we saw him make a, a semi-final on the European Tour in Zarbrücken, beaten by Benito van der Pas. And he's had loads of semis and quarterfinals because he's such a consistent performer, Ian White. He will be rating this year so far as not as good as last year because that's when he picked up three Pro Tour titles. Big strength of his game is finishing. One of our uh, statistics correspondents on social media put a, a table together. And Ian White, who is too shabby on scoring, came out top in the finishing stage. Well, it has to be said, Michael van Gogh was second and had had three times as many attempts yes. at doubles than anyone else. Yeah, you just get the feeling that Ian White's made a, a habit of losing some close games this year. Ones which last year he might have just edged and then gone on and won. Well, yeah, and it's not how many doubles you miss, is it? It's when you miss them. Yeah, exactly. There, there, are, there are times when you can get away with missing times when you absolutely positively have to hit it and there's nobody better in the world than Michael Van Gerwen right now hitting those ones I still feel the defining moment of Ian White's season is the UK Open against <laughs> Gerwin Price yes and that was a tale of a double that needed to be hit and he hit the wrong one as Jermaine Watermana looks to take out a 105 and does exactly that to add to the 104 it's going up well there hasn't been a double miss in this match so far 104, 82, 105. Sublime finishing, even though it's fair to say these two haven't got going on the scoring just yet. One Odd deflection. One. He's had his moments on the European Tour this year, Ian White. Beat Michael Van Gerwen, didn't he, in the quarterfinals in one of the earlier events this year. A very good performance, that was. Yeah, really, really impressive. I think that was wow. in Zarbrook, and wasn't it, where he then went on and lost to Benito van der Pas in the semi-finals. Van der Pas then averaged 110 in the final. He wasn't enough. Peter Wright did for him. Absolutely magical weekend in Zarbrook, and that was. Yeah, bullseye to win the match, wasn't it? 1-2-1. One, one. Yep. 132. Ian White leaving a finish. 81. Main Watermaner failing to do so. So no need to reel in the big fish, as it's known. Which is a good job. Despite all the players that have. Played a part in the story of the European Tour this year. Still only been three winners, mm. and the three that have won the most European Tours wow. overall. Well, Peter Wright has become that, hasn't he, by winning four this yeah. year to take his total to five. Leveled by Michael Van Gogh in this year, last week, in Maastricht. Now, no doubles missed, so it's going to be 2 2, Dan. Well, it's nailed on, isn't it? Absolutely nailed on. Game shown the full play. 15 darters for Ian White on his throw and yet another very impressive checkout. And if this carries on, well, it's going to be difficult to produce a break and that is bad news for the seeded player.
And Jermaine Watamina winning the ball off earlier on. This will help. End the curse of Ross Smith to get a break of throw. Come on, you can't be mentioning the curse of Ross Smith after one lead off 180, man. See? Ridiculous behaviour, man. Don't blame me. 46. Blame Ross Smith. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I curse him every morning when I wake. 55. Shaking my fist at the heavens. Ross Smith, the last man to hit a nine dart on the European Tour way back in 2013 in Gibraltar. Not seen one since. Bit of insight into the morning ritual of Dan Dawson there. Between prayer and meditation, he curses Ross Smith. Yeah. One hundred and five. Sometimes I don't even bother with the other two. Now, Ian White is going to have to go for the 170 this time. Although, to be fair, he didn't hit any trebles last time he had a crack. But what a mean of poise on the type of finish he's been taking out so far. But they've both been taken out. Yeah, well, Ian White's taken out exactly that finish. Well, he knows how to do it. He's just seen it happen. He was like this. And that. Oh, but the important bit at the end was missing. Well, if Ian White is missing, then Watermana will return. But he hasn't been missing much. And he hasn't missed the treble. Nor the double. And there is the break that White needed. Game on. Winning legs of 15, 15 and 14. Ian White producing an Ian White-like display as tough as the diamond after which he is nicknamed. Back comes the machine gun. Matching white at the first exchange. But it has been a sparkling performance from Diamond White so far. He's wrestled the advantage from his opponent. Can he remain in control? Well, the curious thing about this is, despite Ian White's three winning legs being in 15, 15 and 14 darts, and that means his winning leg average, and I know that's not a particularly helpful average in some instances, but it's over 100. His overall average is down at 90. Whereas Jermaine Watermain, his overall average is at 97. Wow, right up, so if you were just purely looking at the stats, you'd be thinking, well, Jermaine Watermain is playing better. But as, as we said wow. at the start of this, when we're talking about the finishing stats, it's about what doubles you hit and what doubles you miss. And Ian White has not missed a single one. Whereas Jermaine Watermain, the one he's missed came when White was poised and he took his chance. 62. Hmm. Well, 118 shouldn't hold any fear for Ian White with 60. the way that he's been finishing, and it will hold a, a little bit less fear now Jermaine Watermainer has failed to apply as much pressure as he could have done. Yeah, 82, 115, and 70 taken out with ease by Ian White. But this time, he's not going to take out 118. Set it up, and what a man at, spurred into trying to take out the biggest one of the match so far. Nice route. He looked really good that first dart as well, didn't he? He wanted two treble 17s for a dart at double top. Doesn't matter if he misses two here. In the end, he only misses one. So, Ian White, perhaps not finishing at 100%, but not letting his opponent back to the board once he's got a dart at double. And that is the key thing. Yeah, and we talked about it being when you miss, and he missed when Watermain was on a checkout which required two trebles. Yeah. 60.
Made a couple one. of semi-finals in the last 12 months. The Dutchman won recently. Mm. The Players' Championship event in Barnsley. Yeah, he seems to be making progress, doesn't he, Jermaine Watermain? I'm sure it's not as quick as he would like, one. but it's forward movement. And as long as that continues, it doesn't really matter about the pace. As long as you continue to improve and your results keep improving, then, you know, your career, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Who's to say he's only 29 years old. And he could be playing when he's Ian White's age of 47 or even older. And, and you would say that Ian White, over the last two or three years, has probably played the best darts of his career. 16. And maybe five, six years ago, when Ian White was more of an also-ran, you would be thinking, well, as... Is Ian White going to peak in his mid to late 40s? You've no idea. Maybe he hasn't even peaked yet, Ian White. The best could be yet to come for the diamond. Well, a 56-year-old won the world match play. Surely a not. A couple of months ago. I'd have remembered. 137. 72. Well, I can only assume he went double top for double 16. In the end, the two singles did it, and look at the snarl. Aggression from the giant teddy bear that is Jermaine Watamina. I don't know, wait, I don't know if you can go down the teddy bear factory and get a Jermaine Watamina. A terrifying prospect. A grizzly bear today, isn't he? And yesterday, you get a Jermaine Waterman car. You can. You can get a Jermaine Waterman car. Somebody out there is driving a little red number with Jermaine Waterman's face emblazoned along the side of it. I assume it's not been crushed into a cube for crimes against automobiles. Yeah, probably the most expensive piece of darts merchandise available. Yeah, probably is. Quite a bit more expensive wow. than the Ian White bag for life. Yeah. Yeah. One on right on five. Jermaine, Jermaine Watermain has got his name, face on the side of a car without even coming up with any gimmicks. I mean, he doesn't dab. It's not like the diamond. Oh, dear. Now, ooh, well, another one of those. Well, it's a fantastic recovery from Ian White there. Really was. And you wonder whether those two treble 20s, the last two darts of his previous visit, whether that played a factor in Jermaine Watermain not even getting close to the 156. And it may well have played a, a factor in him winning that leg and potentially the match. Superb stuff for me and White after a ropey first start. 5 3, one leg away. I don't know about you, Chris, but I'm looking at his average of 92 here, Ian White, and I'm thinking this looks better than 92. Five out of six on the doubles. I know he's not gone berserk on the scoring, but it just looks a lot more solid. I think he'd have... Jermaine's averaging 97. And it's not been enough. I'm not sure what an average would yeah. have to be for him to be for people to be causing problems with Ian White. Maybe it's just the difference of that one missed dart at the under 115 checkout in the fifth leg, which got Ian White a break of throw. I think it's because Ian White has looked comfortable since getting that break of throw. And there you see the superb doubling from both players. We may not see a better show of doubling all day here on day two of the German Darts Grand Prix because this is sublime. Eight legs played, only two darts missed at doubles. And you know, one of them didn't matter. It was just a, a guide or a bit of a marker for double top. And Ian White might be about to close this out with the best leg of the match. Maximum leaves 1-2-1. One, one. 85. 85 scored for Jermaine Watermaner leaves the 156 that he didn't really trouble last time out. He may not even get another crack at it. Treble 20 for the diamond. Treble 17 and ball for a 6 3 win. Oh. Well, 
Interesting. He's toying with Watermana. And he may well get his fingers burnt. Because he's taken out the 1 5 6. Mind games from Ian White. And the machine gun has fired back. And the mind games have backfired. Why would you do it? Why would you do it? Was he even aware? I genuinely don't understand. You've hit 83% of your darts at double. You're playing very, very impressively. Your opponent is on a finish. He's averaging 96 himself. You can't let him have a chance at that. It wasn't even a finish with a bullseye at the end. Well, your guess is as good as mine. Now this, this is where Ian White's years of experience have to come to the fore. He cannot let that affect him. It, it may be that you suggested that he just didn't check his opponent's score. And that's the mistake if he didn't. But if he purposely opted to lay up, saying you're not going to take this out, Wow. And it has just imbued Jermaine Watamena with belief. A third ton plus checkout for Watamena, but the best of the lot. Not just in terms of 60. how big it was, but how crucial it was. Well, match point for uh, Ian White, wasn't it? Iron ring stuff from Jermaine Watamena. It's going to take something to beat that for the best shot of the weekend. He's got to convert that into victory for it to really, really matter. But he may. But he's got his nose in front, but that's been cancelled out by the first start. Progress made with a second. One hundred and thirty-nine. But still, Watermaker could be left very handy indeed if Ian White cannot One clean up this Shanghai shot. Needs all three darts for this. Jermaine Watermaker is on a two-darter. But Ian White, in a game of superb finishing, may be about to take it out is it there it is tops oh it's wonderful wonderful start in a game that saw a whole host of ton plus finishers it looked like a declined effort at one two one may approve the telling blow but ian white picks himself up dusts himself down and takes out a Shanghai to close it out 6-4. A sigh of relief for the Diamond. I am fascinated to know about that decision in the penultimate leg from Ian White. But the number 11 seed sees off the machine gun Jermaine Watermaner. He cannot produce the heroics. He needed the Dutchman to book his place at the World Grand Prix. But if he keeps on making progress, then we may see him there next year. Here is the Diamond, your opening winner. And it's taken a bit out of him, the Stokey. You look happy about that win, Ian. <laughs> I haven't won a game for a long time. <laughs> you know, it's been about four tournaments now before I haven't won a game. And with the money not going on your rankings, which is whatever rule, but, you know, it's, it's nice to win a game. The checkout percentage was, was very high, actually, from, from both of you. Yeah, he, he took a lot of good finishes out, um, and I wasn't getting a shot. He took 105 or 115, and I'm thinking, come on, Ian. But that 120 just it was nice. <laughs> Is it a problem for you just to start that early? When, when, when did you start practicing this morning? No, no, I um, only come in a couple of hours before. Um, you know, it, it suits me being early on. If I'm late on in the afternoon, because I've got diabetes, it's easier for me in the day than it is at night, because at night, I start getting tired. Good to see you tomorrow again. Thank you very much. Ian White! After the last four parties on the European Tour, is the man with the depth very, very